In this video, I want to show you how you can assemble this Raspberry Pi into a portable NAS. You will find out which operating system I used and how I assembled this case here after the intro. Enjoy! My mission was to build a NAS that connects to my home server and keeps all files synchronized, so that when I'm on the go, all files are also available locally for me, while still being able to work with a type of network storage and ensuring that this data is additionally backed up. That means as soon as I upload things here to this NAS, they will automatically synchronize to my home and vice versa. For this, I obviously need a decent operating system in addition to the case and everything else. And that was the starting point for me, namely a video I saw about a super simple and really good looking NIS operating system that I stumbled upon by chance. I will briefly show you the video now and I think it looks really, really stylish. So, said and done, I naturally installed and tried it out right away. However, since this is the version or something, some add-ons are still missing and you can hardly adjust anything at all, which for me meant that this operating system has somehow fallen short. So, cool idea, nice design, but in terms of features, it is really very, very limited. And even if I theoretically don't need many features here, I still want to have the option to install at least a few add-ons. And accordingly, I looked for another operating system and came across Casa OS. The advantage of Casa OS is that you can theoretically install a regular Linux on the Raspberry Pi and then set up Casa OS on top of it. This means that you have the option to continue using the underlying operating system. Additionally, it is an open source operating system and is also regularly updated. Looks very stylish and also comes with some extensions, including syncing. We'll get to that shortly, but first let me show you how to install everything here. This installation is really super, super simple. All you need to do to install everything on a Raspberry Pi is to open the Raspberry Pi imager, select your Raspberry Pi, in my case the Raspberry Pi 4, then choose the OS, in my case Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, and then insert your SD card. Select it here and then click Next. After that you can choose whether you want to enable SSH. You should definitely do this and set a username and password right away. The whole process is flashed onto the SD card. You insert it into the Raspberry Pi and connect by entering SAH, the username you entered in the imager, Zwei thousand nine, and then hit enter. After that, you need to confirm with now and enter your password and now you are already in the terminal. That was the more complicated part of the installation. From now on, you can simply go to the Casa OS website and you can already see the link you need to install everything displayed here. You can copy it here and paste it into the terminal, then press enter, because from now on everything will be installed and set up automatically on the Raspberry Pi. And afterwards you can go to your browser, access the interface and set a username and password. I have already done that here and you can log in with those. And this is what the dashboard looks like. Quite simple, it reminds me a lot of a NAS operating system, which is ultimately what it is supposed to be. Here you can see my connected hard drive. I didn't install everything on an SD card, but rather on an SSD. The whole thing works theoretically just the same. The only difference is that you need to connect the SSD to the PC instead of the 2001 SD card and install the operating system there. And from there, you simply have everything on an SSD that you can connect to the Raspberry Pi via USB, back to Kesa OS. The settings here are kept quite simple, as you can see. However, this is still in a relatively early version. Accordingly, I hope that a few more features will be added. However, for a NAS that I have with me on the go, it is sufficient for now. I have the ability to view my files here, can open an app store and install a lot of additional add-ons. And the most important thing I have installed here is this syncing. When I open this, I can create a folder and sync it with external devices that I can add here using their own identifiers. On one device, I copy my own identifier and then go to the other device and click on add device down here, paste the device identifier and then the two connect with each other. The cool thing about the software is that the devices automatically connect to each other. This means that whether you have them connected in the local network, like in my case right now, or if they are connected somewhere over the internet, the two will automatically find the quickest way to each other and you don't have to worry about port forwarding or anything else. Just enter the device ID and no matter where the other device is located, they will synchronize with each other. As mentioned, in the next step, create the folder locally and then share it. Here I select the device I want to share with and on the other side I simply confirm that I agree to the sharing and then the folders will be automatically synchronized, in my case my videos folder, so that I can easily edit on the go. 
For those who find that insufficient, meaning those who want to install Casa OS and additional software, this can be done through the terminal, either by opening it from the top here, or alternatively, as I just showed, through the integrated terminal of your own computer. So in the second step, we will take a look at the case here. For this, I simply kept my eyes open on Thingiverse and found this almost finished case with a fan connection, which I am not using at all, but instead leaving it completely open so that warm air can escape. It has the perfect holes for the Raspberry Pi and the option to directly install an SSD inside. This whole setup consists of three parts, the fan connection, the outer box, and the front panel, which I actually find quite well done. I then modified it a bit because I wanted to have a power switch so that I don't always have to unplug it to turn everything off. I added a power button here and also a network port, since the one for the Raspberry Pi is essentially located inside and would therefore not be accessible from the outside. Of course, one could have simply routed the cable through the fan connector, but I didn't find that very appealing. Thus, the network connection of the Raspberry Pi is also naturally protected. There is a nice cover here, allowing for a proper connection. Everything is screwed together here with very simple M screws, and that's it. This is how I made my little NAS. If we hold this next to the Raspberry Pi, we can see that it is about twice the length. Yes, about double the height. That was the case I could find that, in my opinion, took up the least additional space. There were also significantly larger ones with OLED displays and so on. But I wanted something really very simple and I think I have succeeded quite well with this case. Anyone who wants this front panel with the additional connections can feel free to check out Thingiverse, where I will simply upload it and you can download it yourself. I will link the original case below in the video description, as well as the Raspberry Pi and the SD card for anyone who wants to replicate this 2001. However, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, feel free to show me with a rating, and then I would say, see you in the next video. Until then, take care and goodbye. You send.